Hey everyone, so we're going to look at flexion and extension. So this refers to increasing and decreasing the angle between two body parts. So if we look at flexion, we look at the limb bending. If we look at extension, we're looking at the limb straightening. Okay, so we're going to look at adduction and abduction now. So adduction and abduction are two terms that are used to describe movements towards and away from the midline of the body. So if we start off with adduction, this is movement towards the body. So it could be a shoulder during rowing, for example. So when rowing the oar, when you put it towards the body, that's adduction. If we look at abduction, this is now movement away from the body, and this can be seen doing a side step in football. So with your hip, during a side step, you're moving your leg away from the midline of your body. So that's abduction. Okay, so we're now going to look at medial and lateral rotation. So these rotations describe movement of the limbs around their axis. So for example, medial rotation is a rotational movement towards the midline. So if you can do this for me now, with a straight leg, rotate it so the toes point inward. This is medial rotation of the hip. Lateral rotation is rotating movement away from the midline. So this is the opposite direction. Have a go. Okay, so now let's look at circumduction. So this is a circular movement and it combines flexion, extension, adduction and abduction. And the best example I can give you of this is the shoulder joint during a cricket ball. We're now going to look at dorsiflexion and plantar flexion. So these are terms used to describe movements at the ankle. They refer to the two surfaces of the foot, the superior surface and the plantar surface, which is the sole. So dorsiflexion refers to flexion at the ankle. So the best way to have a go at this, to perform yourself, is to do a toe raise. So what you'll notice now is your toe should be pointed upwards. This is dorsiflexion. Plantar flexion refers to extension of the ankle. So now, if you point your toes downwards, as if you were a ballerina, that's plantar flexion. Uh, best example in sport to use for this would be when performing a jumping shot in basketball. Right, let's look at pronation and supination. So the easiest way you're going to remember this is if you put your hands out on the table in front of you. Try and keep your shoulders and your elbows still. Now, with your hand in on the table in front of you, turn your hands so your palm is facing upwards and then on the back. This is the supine position. This is why the movement's called supination. A uh, best example I can give you for this is table tennis. Now, using a backhand to put topspin on. Try and stay in the position you're in and turn your palms so they're flat down on the table. This is the prone position. It's named pronation. An example in table tennis of this, well, you tell me. Right, let's have a quick look at hyperextension. So this involves movement beyond the normal position in a direct opposite to flexion. So you could see this at the spine of a cricketer as they arch their back when they approach the crease to bowl. Okay. Finally, we're going to look at inversion and eversion these are both movements of the feet again so inversion involves the inward rotation of the foot so turning it inwards and sideways so for an example this occurs when you dribble a football eversion is the opposite of inversion this involves outward rotation of the foot turning it outwards and sideways this action occurs in a sport such as speed skating